Hey you guys, I've spent the last few days in Shanghai, China, attending the President's Meeting of the World Federation of Diamond Bourses. For those of you who don't know, the WFDB as it's called, is the umbrella organization for all the different diamond exchanges around the world. The diamond exchanges have historically served in an arbitration role, settling disputes between members, but more recently the 27 member bourses from around the world that belong to the WFDB have broadened their mandate and were very much concerned with stimulating trading and preserving the role that dealers play in the market. It's a tough position because the dealers in the midstream are very much squeezed these days between so many different forces affecting the diamond industry. So they gather once a year at the President's meeting this year it was in Shanghai and I was lucky enough to participate. I moderated two panels discussing very important topics that affect the industry today. The first being natural diamonds in the Chinese market. China is the second largest consumer market for diamond jewelry and the market has been sluggish to say the least since COVID. So we try to understand why that was. And the takeaway for me was that sentiment remains uncertain for the short term, but the potential in China is just enormous, but it'll take some economic reform and a rebound in the economy to really spur things and get things going again. The second panel discussion centered around the import restrictions that are being implemented by the G7 nations against Russian diamonds. There were three main points that I took from the discussion. The first two related to the restrictions that were implemented on March 1st, whereby the G7 nations each separately put out guidelines relating to diamonds with their origin in Russia, but had been transformed into a polished diamond in a third country. And so the ultimate intention by the G7 is to implement some sort of a technology-based or blockchain-based traceability program that would be able to track those diamonds. And we'll get back to that point. But in the interim, they require some sort of a declaration on invoice or other documentation stating that one's diamonds are not Russian sourced. So the issues relating to that that were discussed pertain to grandfathered goods, that's old inventory before March 1st, what is the status of those goods? Can I import to a G7 market diamonds that are held in inventory prior to March 1st? So that's a big issue and only the United Kingdom dealt with grandfathered goods and so there is a frustration within the trade and uncertainty as to what is the status of their old stock and that's something that needs to be addressed by the other G7 countries. The second point with regard to the March 1st thing revolves around wording because each country has different requirements and they weren't all absolutely clear as to what exact wording would be sufficient. So there was a call for an initiative within the trade to create a wording that would be consistent and acceptable for all seven nations. And so that was relating to the March 1st announcement. The next deadline that we are dealing with is the September deadline in which the G7, as far as we understand, intends to implement a traceability mechanism and famously the requirement to bring all goods through Antwerp to verify that the goods are on the block blockchain and the industry is very um, frustrated and angry about that potential roadblock to its trade. It will add to the inefficiencies of the market and therefore add to costs and also various other ways that it will affect different businesses and different countries that are involved in the diamond industry. It's very interesting but the trade is anxious about this element and so there was a very strong call from the panelists and members of the audience to really unite as an industry different industry bodies companies and governments if you consider governments in producing countries in africa that are going to be affected by this mechanism there was a great call to really unify the, the diamond lobby so to speak and so that's something i'm watching and i think that uh, needs to be done everyone has their own interests and agenda and are affected in different ways by this proposal and that kind of fragments the, the lobby and so there is a call to really unify and present a united voice to express that this would negatively affect the industry at large. An important point made was that the industry is not against the sanctions themselves, it's the implementation that's been proposed. And so um, there is some hope that will be negotiated 
and understood by the G7 um, powers that be. So very interesting times and something that's going to occupy a lot of my interest in the coming months and a lot's going to evolve, I think, uh, and very quickly. So watch the space. It's been a really cool and wonderful few days in Shanghai. My first visit to China definitely whet the appetite for more. So stay tuned, everyone. Thank you for watching. That's your Diamond Minute. I'm Avi Kravitz and I'll see you next time.